many people have a misconception yesterday we were saying that I have physical work, I do all the housework, I don't have a servant maid, that is what most ladies say when we ask them to go walking. I don't have a servant maid, I do all the housework, I don't need to do walking. Or there are men who say I have, I work on the field, I am a civil, I am into the civil uh, side, I, ha I work on the field, I do not need walking. Or some people say I am a sports person, I actively play sports. So, I do not need to do walking. Many people say I do yoga. So, I do not need to do walking. But this is a wrong way to think. The human body has been created to walk. So, from the four legged creatures, we are, our structure is designed so that we are two legged and the motion is to walk. So, we usually ask the question when people say that yoga is sufficient. There is Mayurasana, there is Bhakasana, there is uh, Matsyasana, today morning we did Matsyasana, there is Garudasana, there is uh, Bhakasana, all, all the, we are trying to copy, there is even a Vrukshasana, we are copying a tree and doing an asana, we are copying a frog, we are copying all these things. But then what is the asana for human beings? If there has to be an asana for a human being, what is it? So, the natural design of the human body was meant to walk. So, the best exercise for the human body is to walk. So, the next question comes, how much do we need to walk? So, for that the answer would be that we have 4 to 6 liters of blood in our body on an average. So, the small size, small structured people will have 4 liters and the hugely built people will have 6 liters of blood. So, let us keep it as an average of 5 liters of blood. So, to burn all the glucose present in 1 liter of blood, we need to walk for 15 minutes. So, 5 liters of blood, if you want to spend all the glucose, you need to walk for 1 hour 15 minutes. So, the ideal time to walk would be between 1 to 1 and a half hour on a continuous way. So, if you are walking half an hour in the morning, you are cleansing half of the blood and then again in the evening another half. So, the entire cleansing process does not happen if you are breaking your walking into half an hour plus half an hour. When you at a stretch walk for one to one and a half hour, the entire body blood gets cleansed and that time there is a potential which is created like all the glucose is used and then from the stores the body starts to bring in the fat and dissolve it and bring glucose or the other stores to make it into glucose. There is a potential created and your body feels that, okay, I require glucose in my blood. I am just talking about glucose as one substance, but it applies to many other uh, substances which we require. The metabolites waste are released when we continuously walk for one hour to one and a half hour on a regular basis basis. So, another point is many people think that you need to walk brisk walk. So, brisk walking is good if you can continuously brisk walk for one to one and a half hour. But if you are not able to do that, it is more important for you to walk for a long duration rather than the distance. So, you might be covering more distance when you walk fast. It is not how many kilometers you walk which is important, but it is the duration which you walk which is the most important thing and of course you don't want to strain yourself and tire yourself at the end of one to one and a half hour you need to feel fresh you need to feel uh, light in your body and that happens only when you walk at your own pace so whoever has their own normal pace walk at that pace don't compete with the others in the park i think most of us in the city are forced to walk in circles in the park. If we have a park, it's everyone going around and around many several times. So, it's not a competition. Just feel free, relaxed and then walk. Another important thing which happens when you walk is your mind also gets relaxed. Someone was saying yesterday, I think that they get all their best ideas when they are walking too. For the next day's planning happens when they are walking. So, try to walk alone without any disturbance and talking with others. 
usually what tends to happen is you go through the whole day's process and you analyze what has happened in that day. If you have some anger, you run through it and you try to deal with it. Some anxiety issues, you tend to deal with it. So when you deal with all these problems on a day-to-day -day basis, they never accumulate. And when they don't accumulate, it prevents it from becoming into a bigger problem. So walking is not just for the physical level, it is also for the mind. So try to get into this good habit from now. Okay. Another uh, thing which yeah, I spoke about sports persons also having to walk. So many people think that when I'm playing sports, I'm burning a lot of calories. So why do I need to walk? So it's not just about the calories. So what happens in a sports person's body is the adrenaline pumps in. So most sports are competitive. You have a competition that I need to win. I have to score. I have to do this. It's an achievement oriented thing. And when you have that kind of thing in your body, the adrenal hormone pumps in. So when the adrenal hormone pumps in, the whole metabolism in the body changes. There is more glucose rushing into the blood rather than using the glucose which is present in the blood. So because of this happening, even sports persons are prone to getting diabetes. We see that many of our sports stars are diabetic. We think, okay, they are active all the time. Then how are they getting diabetes? This is the answer because their adrenal gland keeps pumping in adrenaline into their body and adrenaline is a hormone which uh, employs different ways to increase the glucose in the blood. So if you are playing sports, I'm not saying don't play sports. If it's going to make you happy, yes, good, play sports. But don't stop walking because you're playing sports. The work of walking is different and what sports will do to your body is different. So walking is the way in which every part of your body is exercised, but nothing is overstrained. It's not no one part of your body is going to get overburdened or any muscle getting overstrained is not going to happen. Okay, so this was a little about walking.